Hey, it's Matt with Replit. Today I'm gonna to show you a straightforward way to add user authentication to any app that you've deployed on Replit using Replit Auth. And in this tutorial, we'll be talking about React and node-based applications, but this applies to any app you build because the same mechanisms we'll be using to authenticate are actually available in request headers to the application. And I have a video on how to do this with Flask and in Python uh, that you can check out in the link um, in the description, but this video will sp be specifically for React. Um, of course, it does generalize. So let's take a look at what we have here. This application is actually um, the uh, default, uh, like create Vite app, and Vite is just a development framework for React. Um, but it's the default Vite app, and I've, the only change I've made is adding uh, Replit authentication. Um, you can, actually, if we disable this, we should be able to see. I'll stop and rerun. So if we, if we disable authentication, you can see the default app is just a counter. But once I enable Replit Auth, which is done by going to the authentication pane and restarting the app, once we enable authentication, Replit will know that we're not logged in and I'll say, hey, you, you need to be logged in to access this page. And that's only a byproduct of enabling. Once you click enable, this will be true for your deployment. So just be aware of that. Now, the app, what did I do to this application? I really only made two changes. And that was that I added this async function, get user info which is fetching our Replit auth user endpoint, and then a use effect, uh, which is gonna run when the app runs, that's fetching the data. And that's just getting the user info, converting it to JSON, and then logging it to the console, as well as running this set user function, um, which we're using, uh, which is a state basically. And so we're setting the user vari variable and then you know logging that data uh, to the console as well. And so what that means is that we'll be able to access the user variable when we run the application. So I'll show you what this means because that's a bit theoretical. I'm gonna click login with Replit. And this is like logging in with Google, right? If you've ever gone to a website and clicked login with Google, we're using Replit servers to authenticate the user. Um, and so now I get the same app, right? What's different? Uh, if I go to DevTools, you can see we get this object, which is our, our, our user data. And I have my name, I have my bio, uh, my user ID, and my profile image. So that's pretty cool, right? Because what that means is that now I can customize this application or even just like block users from accessing my application or rather whitelist certain users, right? I could create a login system or a, a page management system around this. And you know, as an app, an example maybe of what we wanna do, instead of saying V plus React, we could do uh, a little wave. So we'll say like a wave emoji, and then uh, we'll drop in the template user.name because the object is user that we're storing here. And you can see the name is Matt. And if I make this smaller, I'm saying, hi, Matt, right? <laughs> um, we could even do something uh, a bit more fancy um, by maybe like returning the profile image. So if I want to do like uh, image uh, and then say width is like maybe 100, source is um, user.profile image. Close that tag. Whoops. I'm doing something weird. Might have to drop some quotes around this. That's not it. What do we got going on here? Let's try putting it in this div. I think this has to be a string actually. Yep, that was it. Now there's an extra quote. I don't actually think we need those quotes. <laughs> Not the best formatting, but uh, you know, you get the idea, right? We can we can pull in different elements from our user and return them here. If I wanted to put my bio, uh, for example, I believe the bio is uh, included as well. So we could do like user.bio. Um, and yeah, right from there, we could start building an access control. We could control who has access to the application. We could customize the application to meet our users needs. Um, and then we could even spin up a Postgres database using the Replit agent or just going to the Postgres tab um, and uh, clicking create new database. And then we could store user data in that database and have a completely interactive application. Now, the other interesting thing that I'd like to mention is that we do have a Replit Teams um, part of this object, an array in this object. And so I'm part of the Replit team. Replit Teams is our enterprise project. So our uh, 
product rather. So you could imagine if you're a part of Rubble Teams, um, building for your analytics team or building for your customer support team, um, and then customizing the experience based on those teams or controlling who has access to certain resources based on the Replit account that they have. And this is a really simple way of adding authentication to your site. And it pairs really nicely if you're already using Replit with the folks you collaborate with. Um, so yeah, this was a straightforward one. This is how you can add Replit off to your application and control who has access when. Um, but I'm Matt in developer relations at Replit. And uh, until next time, peace.